Today I'm joined by Blue and we're going to be talking about this man. Now not only did he leave me the legacy of uh, a couple of plays and, and amazing memories, um, but Graham left me a, a legacy of uh, something that became for a while, an obsession. And that obsession was with sound and records and I can remember going to his house where he had the most amazing sound system uh, with huge speakers and, and a very expensive record player and going back to my little flat and trying to play my records on my really quite basic record player with what I thought were quite posh speakers and thinking I can't hear the bass notes and that led me to and I asked him and he said what you have to do is to buy a really decent record player and now Blue I have got a really decent record player haven't I? Yeah. And I've got a few records. Yeah. Yeah. You've got loads downstairs. I've got loads downstairs. And Blue has made a little something that he's going to present to me. And it is a very special Lego record player. Look at that. And not only that, but he's given me, what's this? A little shelf with loads of record players. That's right. So I can keep that on my little desk so I'm going to keep it here and that will be with me and I can think of Blue and Graham every time I come to work on my computer and Blue's going to have something else to do that he hasn't had any preparation for when we get on so Race to be Seen started as a play about Graham do you know anything about Graham? He was the fastest runner well done, yeah. He was the fastest and runner. Was blind. And he was blind. He didn't even have his own eyes. So he had kind of doll's eyes, effectively, glass eyes inside his, his eye sockets. Uh, and I mean, there you can see even from that image what a, a runner he, he actually looks like a proper runner. And he was a proper runner. I wrote that play in the 1980s and then later on revisited it after sadly he passed away. And that's Graham, the world's fastest blind runner, the second uh, play that came out. And Blue's having a cheeky look at the photo that I'm going to show in a minute to see if he can recognise anybody. Um, that's the second version of the play, uh, which was written really for Mari as a tribute to Graham. Not only about Graham, the athlete, but Graham, the man. Uh, and the guy I came to know, he ended up being my best man at my wedding, my best friend. And we just had a really strong, strong relationship and godparent to Blue's daddy. So Blue's daddy, Ollie, is a godchild of um, of Graham. And this play was, was uh, written and performed by initially EBYT by Tim Ford. And then in the, the middle of 2007, uh, a lady called Catherine Hudson... And there's Catherine Hudson. Uh, Catherine Hudson put on a, a, a play by her group called the Thurfield School and invited me to see it. I couldn't go on the first occasion, but they won the drama festival they'd entered. So they ended up being in the National Drama Festivals Association England Winners Festival. And at that time, I was thinking, actually, I'd love to do this play with my youth theatre. It was now seven years old. Uh, I, uh, and one of the guys in my youth theatre had performed it for his GCSE play. And I thought, he's fantastic. This is Simon Froud, who ended up playing me in the, uh, in the OYT production. And so we went to see it. Now, I think Blue will recognise two of the people in this photograph. Who do you recognise? You and Daisy. Me and Daisy. And I think you, Catherine who are Hudson. watching, Will and Catherine Hudson, who was the director, I think you who are watching might, if you can see it clearly, recognise the other person. It was my first brush with a very famous film star. He'd this acted with David Grand Bowie. Um, this, yeah, that one's Grandad. That's uh, Daisy. Daisy. And this one... That's his auntie. That is a guy called Michael Caine, who is a very famous actor, and he performed with David Bowie. So he actually worked with David Bowie. He's super famous. Is he still alive? Uh, yes, he is. And we went to see the play at the English final, uh, and it was just incredible. Um, and she had, Catherine had, a, a real clear director's vision uh, she costumed the, the people in in black 
clothes and white gloves and Graham in white and black gloves and each of them had a stick a white stick or a black stick I can't quite remember but it just had such a vision and she used the ensemble uh, of her actors in a way that no professional theatre company could ever have afforded because it was unique to schools and I suddenly thought and this was after I'd been doing things like Dan Nolan with four actors we've got a resource here uh, to use the ensemble like I used to um, but like Catherine was doing so well with music in a way that I'd not used music before and she actually changed my thinking not only about Graham and influenced us, our plan to put the production on, um, but about my plays in general. And she also had to do a shortened version for the, the, the drama festival, which led to this, the final version of the play, which is Graham's uh, World's Fastest Blind Runner. But it was, it was a shortened version that was suitable for festivals. And it is, I think, the definitive version of the play. So... That's it, and it sets us really nicely up for how our youth theatre managed to do the play uh, soon after this. I think it was in 2008, maybe it was in 2007, but we, we put this production on and we entered it for drama festivals. Thanks, Blue, for being part of this. Maybe you'll be part of another one in the future. What do you think? Yeah. Lovely.